Welcome to another episode of Burn Peak Express, and today we're gonna be doing something a little different, but kind of the same. So yesterday, I got a haircut. My wife cut my hair, was, she's never cut hair before, and she killed it. I feel great, I feel dialed, but Burn Peak is kind of a mess. We were pinned all weekend doing this gravel road project, and we've got an excavator out there, we've got pallets, I've got wood that I didn't end up using for another project. The valve stem and the gator is glued together with like crazy glue. Everything is in disarray. And honestly guys, if I don't do it today, it's never gonna get done. So I considered just not posting a video this week to take care of all this stuff, but you were with me for organizing the storage unit for building a freaking break room in the shop. So you're coming along today. We're gonna do some chores. First things first, we gotta clean the shop. Well, that's not good. Looks like Oscar was in here this morning, so we'll just knock that out real quick. All right, so garage is dialed now. I've gotta deal with all this. So for starters, I have a couple of leftover ferns. There's a shady spot over there that's got nothing planted in it. I'm gonna plant these ferns real quick. So I gotta bring a bunch of this stuff up to the flight deck, and then once we empty out the gator, I gotta take even more stuff up to the flight deck. Not only do we have tool overflow up here, but a lot of the times we have to bring them to the other side of the yard, so we really are gonna need a north trailhead soon. Maybe it'll be like a moonshangle ranger station or something. The other day I was gonna build a few berms, and so I got all these two by 12s for the radiuses, and then I realized I didn't have enough lumber for planks, so we built Elmer Fudd, but I need to bring them up to the flight deck so they're not leaning against the garage, so when we do build the berms, I'll have them. Let's knock it out. Most people do stuff like this on the weekends, but on the weekends, I'm doing my builds, and then during the week, I'm editing, so it's kind of seven days. I'm sorry, but every once in a while, we're probably gonna have a chore day on Burn Peak Express. Okay, looks like the lumber rack's holding up. So they haven't come and picked up the excavator yet. And I have all these pallets here. My neighbor says he'll take them. So I'm gonna load these pallets up. We're gonna drop them off at my neighbor's house. So chicken wire is gonna get scrap metal. And now moving these pallets around is a pretty harmless exercise where I can practice with the excavator. Seems like a good idea, right? I'll pull the gator over here. I'll stack up these pallets, and I'll try and put them into the back of the gator so that we can run them down to my neighbor's house and throw them in his trailer. It's like having the hand of God with barely any effort whatsoever, and you can just pick up big, heavy things. Now let's work on the pallets. My neighbor was clear that his intent was to use these pallets as firewood. So I'm not worried about damaging them, but I'm gonna try not to just for the sake of this exercise. I'm failing at this miserably, but that's why it's called practice. All right, put a little scratch in the driveway. It's not a big scratch, it's a little scratch. All right, that's kind of where I wanted it. Two more to go. Let's see if the next ones are a little easier. So let's be careful of the hostas. Very careful. So the crazy thing is, if you know nothing about excavators, they will still rent you one. They don't ask you anything. All they ask you for is your driver's license and a credit card. Big shout out to United Rentals. I could just dismantle my house with it right now. Drama, you might want to steer clear, buddy. Okay, Drama, you can't be there. Maybe I could pick Drama up and move him in the garage with the excavator. Yeah, I didn't scrape the driveway. I'm starting to get a feel for it. We'll just nudge her into place. We're gonna have to be a little more careful. We got her. Yeah, we got him loaded up. Actually, on second thought, I wanna try one more thing. <laughs> now we're gonna drop these pallets off at the neighbor's house. 
I know they're in there nice and securely because we got them in perfectly with the excavator. Man, these are not lightweight. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave them in his trailer. He did me a solid lending me the tractor, so we'll give him these pallets. Oh, a whole bunch of dirt to the face. Oh, this is the first one. You see the progression of excavator skill. And the last one is in much better condition. All right, that'll make a mighty fine fire. Next thing we gotta do is fix up the gator. This was brand new in like September. We'll take a really close look at it. I'll show you all the wear that we've put on it. So first things first, we have to clean off the gravel area later. Whoa. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get all the loose stuff out of the gator. Some of this gravel is just caked on so good. Now the good thing is, this thing's basically farm equipment, so you can just hose it anywhere. And so that's what we're gonna do. All right, the gator is clean enough. This tire, it was a farm repair. You have a flat front tire. What's that? Your front tire's flat now. It's flat? Yeah, like, it's folded. I wonder how that happened. You don't fit, these are 415s, the Gator takes a 412. So, I just read that I could use CA glue to try and repair this temporarily, so let's give it a try. So not only is this holding, but it seems to really be holding. Hopefully it makes a seal. Hell yeah. And actually, now that we just washed the gator and it's got water all over it, you can still see air coming out of that valve stem. That's been happening all weekend, but it's too little for the tire to just completely deflate. So it's a very slow leak. We have here, replacement valve stem. Listen, guys, I am not a tire repair specialist, but I've replaced valve stems before. You rip the old one out, you jam the new one in. This is probably, how 99% of the population changes a valve stem. So first we're gonna let all the air out of it because we have to actually pull this valve stem out. Now we're gonna yank this one out. Now we're gonna pop the new one in. What I'm gonna do is, I've just got this all purpose cleaner stuff. It's just gonna act as a lubricant when we try to slide this in. I can't stress enough how this is not a tutorial. We're just gonna stuff this in little by little until she pops into place. I don't see any damage to the valve stem whatsoever doing this. Boom, she's popped in. So what I'm gonna do is fill this tire with air and then we're gonna see if there's any air leaking out the side like there was. We're gonna spray some soap on it and see if it bubbles up. Not the slightest bubble, it's perfect. Install it with a Park Tool flat screwdriver. This tail light has been a little loose. Banged it with the tractor real good yesterday, and I think that's what did her. And I can see, indeed, the clips that went into here broke off completely. So this tail light is just kind of flapping in the breeze. But let's see what we can do. Okay, we got this off. So how are we gonna save this and hold it in? That's the question. Hear me out. This tail light assembly is shot. It needs to be replaced. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna hold it in by driving screws through these little tiny holes right here, and I'm gonna drive them straight into the side of the taillight assembly, because I'm going to replace this anyway. That part's a lie. Beautiful. So it's always worth trying a janky repair when you got nothing to lose. Look at that. Look, it's just perfect. Perfect farm repair right there. So now, Brake lights, reverse light, yeah, that's what I thought. Golden, just in time for dinner. So, we got the shop cleaned up, the gator's all back to normal, we gave those pallets to my neighbor, the driveway's clean, we even planted some little ferns, and we took all that wood that was leaning against the house and took it up to the flight deck there. We have been quite productive today. Thanks for sticking it out with me. You were here for moral support, made me feel a little better about it. It's 6 p.m., so if I didn't start doing that in the morning and get all this done today, it just wouldn't happen. Sometimes you gotta have a chore day. Anyway, if you're interested in this Berm Peak jersey, it's available at the link below. Super comfortable, doesn't irritate your nipples. Pretty good plus. But uh, thanks for riding with me today. I'll see you next time.
Let's see if I can kind of tilt this back. Driveway looks okay.